Hello everyone. I am Etherman. This is my friend Dr. Smart Contract and our new irregular podcast, Crypto Not for Dummies. Why do we need wallets when we can hold assets on an exchange? We need wallets because, in fact, having a wallet, if we're talking about a cold wallet, means that you keep your money at home, or storing funds on the exchange means they are held physically in remote storage. When you register an account on the exchange, you create a kind of account, you deposit your money in the exchange hot wallet and this money is on the exchange balance, as just with a bank, you keep money in a bank account. Accordingly, keeping your money in a cold wallet means keeping your money in your hands, but with the exchange, you transfer it your funds for safekeeping or for various trading operations. Accordingly, if we are talking about large sums of money, of course, it is better to keep them in a cold wallet. If we are talking about small amounts of money, you can store them on the exchange, but in general you can also store large amounts on the exchange. It is a question of your trust in the exchange, understanding of what will happen to your money in case of some security-related issues or termination of the organization. And, as you may have seen, from different sources, in case of a very sharp price movement, funds of some people, who have 100 to 1000 bitcoins in their wallets, start to migrate to the exchange and from the exchange. Accordingly, as we said earlier, large sums of money are better to be kept in cold wallets. In this case, your keys, your money. The first golden rule which any self-respecting crypto holder should know is not your keys, not your coins. So when you store your funds in a hot wallet, even in case of a reputable exchange, there is always a risk of being hacked and losing your funds. As long as you don't control the wallet's private key, you have no control over your funds. So, this is a matter of security. Of course, ideally, you should always keep your funds in a cold wallet. If you need to make a transaction, transfer your assets to the exchange, make a transaction and transfer them back. Or make the transaction on the DEX, if it is expedient for you and you are fine with the gas fee, etc. Hello, check check. How do exchanges make money? Some will say they make money on hamsters, some will say on commissions, and some will say on the spread. But in fact, as it should be, the exchange makes money on commissions when you trade. If we are talking about the spot market, there is a commission of 0.1 to 0.2% attributed to revenue. If we are talking about the margin futures terminal, respectively, the exchange makes money both through the order execution and crediting fees. That is, they have a discount rate at which they credit you, it is either dynamic or static, and as a result, the exchange makes money through it. Unscrupulous exchanges make money through charging spread fees and deposit or withdrawal fees, etc. And through things like wash trading. Yes, when you seem to see the liquidity in the order book, say 100 orders, you can buy a certain amount of Bitcoin, for example, you try to place a limit order in the order book, but it is not executed, you try to place a market order, but when you go to market, all these orders leave the order book and you drop to the bottom of the order book. That's how the unscrupulous exchanges work and make money. Through the increased spread, in this case, yes. Well, it is clear that some exchanges make money on deposits, others on withdrawals on crypto wallets or bank cards. The main earnings are maker-taker fees, i.e. a percentage of the trading fee of trading volume for the corresponding exchange. There are also such things as staking. Again, you have to understand that exchanges keep quite a large number of tokens in their hot wallets and especially in the indirect networks they can become either validators. In general, they also earn inflation interest in the networks. Some share it with their clients, some share it not with their clients, but this kind of earning also exists. Okay, let's move on. Question. Security problems of crypto exchanges. We should distinguish two types of problems here. First, it's technical security. Exchange as well as any other service can be hacked and funds can be withdrawn from their hot wallets in some unknown direction. In essence, you and the exchange lose these funds in the wallets, they disappear. The second problem, I guess, is connected with the government and the law. Again, due to the fact that we are not yet completely regulated in most countries and there may be a sudden change of policy or a blow of wind, the exchange may be seized, sanctioned, etc. 
The government might not confiscate users' money, but how will it return them? Well, in any case, the state as a regulator can impose sanctions. Some provider with which the exchange works will freeze the funds for some time and accordingly all users will experience discomfort. If we elaborate upon the exchange security topic, why do centralized exchanges require KYC? When you verify your identity, the level of your relations with the exchange goes to a new level. The exchange gets an understanding of who owns the funds, and you know the legal entity against which you can initiate legal proceedings for compensation in case of some unclear situations. Exchange hack, sanctions, that sort of thing. Some exchanges may comprise a lot of legal entities, which will just make you dance a legal circle, and it will be a never-ending court case. In this context, we should also talk about such things as Shotgun KYC. This is where you, such a great crypto trader, earned or took money from some investor, deposited it to your exchange account, wanted to trade, and then got your account freezed, and the exchange said to you, Dear friend, please provide us information on the origin of funds. If you didn't earn it dishonestly, but you can't provide a history of earned money in the OTC market, and you can't provide any transaction history, they just quietly freeze your money and that's it. There are some unscrupulous exchanges that act this way. So, to avoid such cases, you should always try to legalize yourself as much as possible and be ready, first, to pass KYC on all exchanges, so that everybody knows who you are and you have a trust history with your account. Secondly, it is desirable to have at least some proof of the origin of your funds. As cryptocurrency proof you can use receipts confirming that you bought miners. Here they are, here's my crypto mind, here's my mining pool history, here I transferred them to the exchange. In this case they have to go in a well-known direction and refund you money. But again, there may be different scenarios, as unfortunately we live in a world without clear regulations regarding cryptocurrencies, so keep it in mind and be careful. That was our new irregular show, Crypto Not For Dummies, with Etherman and Dr. Smart Contract. Give a thumbs up and hit the notification bell. Subscribe. See you soon, guys.